Hey everybody, it's Sandwedge. Welcome back to a special episode. This is going to be a playthrough of Stickney Installation Episode 1 by Snacksalotl. And actually, she's here with me. What's up? Howdy. And uh, third time's a charm because we tried to record something and the power went out for a split second. So isn't that just how everything goes sometimes? Ugh. It could be worse. We were only on the second map. And yeah. The first few maps in this episode are really short. Which is a great segue into what these are like, because these are very inspired by the original levels, like this this first one here. Pretty, uh, pretty short, kind of has that, like, shotgun secret, just like the original. Of course, this area looks very familiar. But, uh... Kind of mixed it, mixed and matched, and has its own nice dark feel with these darker midis and this sort of dark skybox. Almost like a moody episode one. Yeah, and it's it, it has a lot of each map has a lot of similarities to the original, but I wouldn't necessarily just call them remakes, um, just because uh, the layouts are completely like mixed around. Uh, there's yeah. just a few like features in each one that stands out, or like themes that the map had to begin with. Yeah, like, so when you made this, did you kind of go and play back those levels, or did you just sort of... It was it was more like, hey, this is what I was particularly memorable about this level, let's try to incorporate it. It was just, I, I took, like, a few things that I liked from each level, and then just made my own. Um, yeah. I, I actually, initially, I tried making them based on my memory of the map, but that was actually, like, I, I played so much Doom 1, like, growing up, that they were way too accurate, so they actually <laughs> felt like they were just, like, remakes rather than their own levels. Oh, interesting. So you actually tried to diverge a bit from your original thought on it. Yeah, the most I did was, like, open up uh, the levels in an editor, just seeing, um, like, a few, like, key features just to look back on it, but it depends. Not, in, not every map does that. Um, like, this one does not have very much in common with the original... E1, M2, like, at all. Right. Yeah, especially, yeah, this opening is quite different, although it's it's very striking opening with this sort of these blinking tech pillars. And, uh, of course I'm playing this in software, which is something that I've started to love, and I think it looks great with this episode. There's a lot of moody lighting in this episode, so it works out. Yeah, so I guess we talked about this last, <laughs> the recording that didn't save, but uh, this was sort of a bit of an experiment for you. You did the anti-mortem uh, UDMF stuff for quite a while, and then you, you dipped your toe into vanilla, uh, and it seemed to work out very well. I think a lot of people have really liked this. Yeah, I went from one end of the spectrum to the other. I just went from like crazy UDMF stuff that's like about as far removed from vanilla as possible than just like, oh. I was gonna go back to square one, but yeah. it worked out well. I was very surprised by that, but uh, you know, that was the kind of the interesting thing is that you you put so much work into those anti mortem maps. Each map was probably like almost like almost half or an entire episode of one of these, right? So I almost think it prepared you in a way to like you just pumped these vanilla maps out because you were so used to putting all that work in. Yeah, like. For the anti boredom maps, like, for the larger ones especially, like, it would take me, like, a month or two to make one, and that would end up being, like, an hour long, which had way more detailing, so some of the longer anti boredom maps, like, are about as long as this full episode. Well, yeah, because this episode's gonna be about an hour long, I think, to play through. Yeah. So... The later ones are a little bit longer, but it's mostly, like, due through difficulty. Like, gameplay-wise, I don't think they're necessarily that much longer. I mean... Episode one is definitely the shortest, but at most each episode takes like two hours. Now I am thinking of doing this save list 100% because you're here to help me with the secrets. But uh, this episode one is going to be fairly not going to be too hard to to do save list, especially if you've played a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'll have any trouble with this. It's it's definitely harder than the original episode one, but it's not by a whole lot. There's and I've already played games, these. But... Yeah, I've already yeah. played these on... I, so basically I've played chunks of these on stream, which is 
kind of usually like kind of a, a test as well and uh, that's kind of why i'm playing them here because it's kind of like i haven't quite experienced the whole thing you know right through so this is nice oh sh um now what was i gonna say i mean uh what what are your views up on on your thread at this point uh, 120,000. <laughs> That's, uh, quite popular, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely a lot of it's through bots, but it's, <laughs> it is a popular thread. I just don't know how many of those are bots. Yeah, I know. It's, it's popular anyway, but obviously... At least half of them are bots. That's all I can say. Something's but funky. <laughs> but still, even 60,000 views for a thread is ridiculously popular. Like, 120,000 is, like, absurd. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad it's not just bots. I'm glad, you know, obviously, you know, you and Wilster with your vanilla stuff even caught the attention of Doom Kid, and, and now you're making a collaboration stuff, so... Yeah. It's been quite successful. Now, uh, it looks like I missed a couple secrets. Secrets? Did you get the chainsaw? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so Wait a see... minute. Wait, just a sec. I gotta get all the items, right? Oh, yeah. There's nothing there, is there? No. Is there something... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, you got it's... that one before. Last time I played this, right? Yeah. Of course, I forgot this time. Tasty. Where's the last one? Uh, the last one's by the entrance. Oh. I suck. Wait, is that the entrance? That or no? And Wait, what? That's the exit. Heck, am I? Yeah, and then go to that like main reactor room thingy. If you press that computer by the door. Oh, this. Oh. On, yeah. Wait, isn't this? <laughs> isn't, the, isn't this the one where Half Cool made that like ridiculous secret? Yeah. <laughs> where it has like the snacks invincibility power up and there's a cyber. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know if people know what we're talking about, but. Uh. Half Cool just made this fake secret in this map right behind that door. With a custom invincibility that has an axolotl face. Which you're thinking of putting in, right? I might, yeah, I might actually put it in. Because the invincibility is so rare, anyway. Yeah. Filtration plant. Ah, uh, this one I remember being a little tricky. Yeah, this is the first, like, difficulty spike. Also introduces uh, the pinkies. Ah, uh, just like the original, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't perfectly remember Doom, so I'm actually kind of asking you, like, right? That that was that. That's what happened, right? <laughs> I know you've played. I think you've probably played a lot more Doom One than me. Absolutely. Uh oh. I need to get to that ammo. It's my uh, favorite. Oh, I'm gonna die. Aldrilod. Which is why it was so fun to make levels kind of styled after the originals, because I, I love the atmosphere that Doom 1 had. And you know, I think Doom 1 at the time, especially, was like always had a, an element of horror, and I think you leaned into it even more here with the sort of dark, moody atmosphere as well. Yeah. I'm a little scared here. I'm a bit low. In this first episode, it's mostly just being moody rather than horror, because, I mean, you're both... It is also faithful in the sense that you only fight low tiers. Um, now, that's an so interesting point, because that reminds me of uh, what you've talked about with this design you know you did anti-mortem it's got the supercharged mod it's got all sorts of crazy stuff and oh what the heck i don't think i saw that before um sorry i lost my train of thought there because i saw a switch <laughs> wait a minute 
I don't think I've found that secret yet. Okay, so you know what? I bet you have to stand up on that thing. I guess you, you don't want people to use free look for this, do you? Because that's kind of a... I mean, they could if they want to. I'm not going to call the police on them or anything, but it's Maybe not how you're should. supposed to get it. Maybe you should. That I'm a little afraid of right now, because I am yeah. playing saveless, but... Some of the maps, uh, there aren't many re uh, rad suits around, just because... I, I don't, personally, I don't think that it's, like, mandatory to put a rad... Yeah, if you're only taking, like, five damage for very few points of the map, it's... Eh, I don't really mind. Especially if there's enough health. Uh, this is it, the area that... Yeah, this is... No rad suit, but it's obviously not that long, so... Yeah. And it kind of just restricts you to where you don't want to like run through pools unless you have to but you just say run through fools pools oh <laughs> <New pitch. laughs> no i don't so use you, that word like you, you do. gave me you gave me shit for saying that so i was about to say like <laughs> but um oh sh oh is he in the dark there oh yeah so lots of shotgunners i i know some people i don't for some reason give give shit to shotgunners, but shotgunners are awesome. Oh yeah, they are. They're they're the best hit scanner. They're they're squishy. They're they're potentially deadly, but not always. Yeah, it's good stuff. They also have a great design. Uh, you mean just gameplay wise, or? No, just how they look. I love their sprite too. Yeah. It's like they're, they've got the red accents to tell you, yo, this is... Watch the hell out. Just a big Hulk and bald, bald guy with a shotgun. Yeah, and that's why the zombie men are green, because they're they're safe. <laughs> Kid-friendly. I guess so. Didn't think of it that way. A lot of secrets in this map, and... Oh, here's, here's the, <laughs> the dastardly imp ambush. Uh, that was that was one where you said like yeah, that was just like I was gonna change it, but then you thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I, it was there was like a bit of a placeholder. Like yeah, I'm gonna have some like monsters in there, and then I was like, wait a minute, the original only had four imps, and like looking back, that's kind of hilarious because that's like the original like monster closet that was actually had a good setup, but it's just, it is just four imps, so I just kind of copied that one because. People usually think there's going to be something more intense over there, and it's just, you know, a handful of empty boys. I heard something open up there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm back here, which is quite helpful. Okay, now I can get this. I probably should have gotten that armor earlier, but... Yeah. Hmm. Now, I... There was something that I was... Trying to say about anti-mortem, but I can't even remember now. Oh, okay, here's this. Does it have to do with lights? <laughs> how did, so you loved your dynamic lights. How, how did you tear yourself away? I don't even... Well, it wasn't easy. I had to look at them every day. Just to get myself through it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you, you, your anti-mortem maps had a billion dynamic lights, and... Yeah, the yeah. seven maps combined had a total of about 1,500, which is, I think... Which is just a little bit under the amount of enemies in the entire WAD, I think. <laughs> a life for every an enemy, a chicken in every pot. I did the math, and I think it was like one one light per 1.7 enemies, if I remember correctly. But I don't I don't remember what the actual statistic was. <laughs> Do the was math. Something. Yeah. Because um, I I don't like with uh, UDMF maps if you just toss in like a single dynamic light or two, that doesn't really look right. You gotta dedicate. Which I mean, you don't need that many to like dedicate for light sources, but. I just, uh, I, can't, uh, I just love some good lighting. What can I say? Well, you know what? There's some cool lighting in this too, even if it's not so dynamic. Yeah, they do get better as um, they go, in my opinion, because um, 
I've heard the advice that when you're making megawads, you should like you shouldn't necessarily make them like back to back in like sequential order, but yeah, it's worked for me pretty well personally. Um, because generally, I think the maps get better quality wise as they go because I learn more and more. So if you like the first few maps that you're playing, you're kind of going to enjoy the rest of them. Um, plus it just True. helps me like I don't know. Personally, it just works for me. Yeah, I mean, I think what I always remembered was John Romero saying, like, he made E1 and M1, I think, last to sort of, you know, put, like, kind of lead off on your your strongest foot and uh, make sure people don't just put it down. But, um, I mean, I think that's not a hard rule, right? You can always make yeah. another pass on a level. I went to um, remake the E1 and M1 after I did the rest of the episode, but I actually like the original one more. Um, also, what that kind of does is, like, each episode kind of, like, the first map of each episode kind of feels unique compared to the rest of the episode, episode because you kind of, like, find with, like, theme and, like, uh, patterns you're going through. Um, so the first level seems to feel a bit different. Uh, you're looking for the secrets, right? I, where was that switch that I wanted to so shoot? For, behind you behind me yeah by the tech pillar over there yeah how do i how do you get that see that blinking computer turn around oh that oh Initially, that was oh. a walk line, but demons triggered it constantly, so it was kind of jank, so I made it so you need to do that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's cool. That is... a soul sphere and an optional key. You don't see those every day. <laughs> was there one in, in the original level for this? Yes. Like I said, I need to, like, defer to you. One of the weird... There are a few weird things I did that stick to the original that you wouldn't necessarily notice. But the amount of keys in the key order is actually, like, pretty much the same to the original. Oh, shit. Well, god damn. So if, like, a map requires, like, the red key, then the blue key, and then the yellow, like, I will follow that order for general progression. Typically, but... Looks like I'm missing one one more secret. Yeah. You remember which one? So. Oh, that's a secret exit that you're missing. Right. Where's that? If you loop back around to the upper platform that you drop down to near the exit. So if you go, nope, nope, turn around. Near the near so the you're exit. You're looping up to that area, but you, it's that northern part of the map. Oh. To up. The door was partially opened at one point, but... Sorry, I... I, <laughs> I think talking to you, sometimes I get a little... turned around this yeah. way, right? Yep. Basically, to find it, um, that opens up after. If you open the way to explore oh. the rest of the level, if you loop back around to explore up here, then you'll just see it. Ah, there we go. Cool. Demon housing. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot. Ah! Yes, the old military base. Now this level gets a little crazy. Yeah, this is probably the hardest map in the episode. Of course, uh... Now what exactly is like military base here? I can't quite put my finger on it. Big box of imps. Big, bo big box of imps. But it's less symmetrical. Uh, I think I need to get the shell out of there for a bit. Rocket launcher. That's gonna help. Now, what I do remember is that you're very cheeky, and eventually those imps can get out if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Ooh, that's a barrel. Let me, uh... 
Let me wait till I trigger that rocket launcher ambush. Ooh, that was helpful. Let's let these guys. Oh! Damn. <laughs> that was a pretty good little melee. Are you I... not entertained? I don't think I've ever seen that before. I mean, like, there's been one-offs where the shotgunner's not fighting the pinky, but, like, where they're both going at it, I don't think I've ever seen a shotgunner win. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. They, they were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe too. He was putting some moves in. That's yeah. Pretty... That's the great thing about Doom AI. Sometimes crazy shit happens. Oh, uh, jeez. This is... This it's is not actually that difficult to deal with, but um, with them all being specters, if you go to rush to pick up the rocket launcher at the start of the map, you'll have a bunch of specters in a dark-ish area. He's actually, he's actually just gonna start biting me. Oh, oh, poor guy. This is where I. Uh... Oh, now that shooting imps in a barrel. I felt good. Uh, however, I think I'll let these guys go for now. Which song, which which MIDI is this? Um, this is from the Ultimate Doom MIDI pack, which is coincidentally the E1M9 slot as well. It's made by Lipith. Uh, ooh, shotgun box. Which I wasn't a fan of a lot of the MIDIs from the... Uh, Ultimate Doom MIDI pack. I felt like they didn't necessarily fit the vibe of the original maps, but I did think this one was really good. Yeah, this one's nice. I think it kind of fits the uh, run and gun action of this too. <sighs> yeah. Now this one, I'm a little. I got to admit, I'm a little scared of dying. You got 90% health, and you got a nice amount of armor. Yeah, I just mean, like, this one's a little bit longer and a little bit, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't play saveless a ton. I only do it when I think I... I basically usually do it when I don't think I'm going to die. <laughs> just like, you know. It's so a good you... way to play oh, saveless. No, Sorry. But... Yeah. yeah, it's not going to affect you because you killed the imps beforehand. But the side with that the that opens, um, it's coincidentally the side that you're on when you like trigger the line. So that horde of imps in that box will just kind of make their way towards you without you knowing at first. <laughs> yeah. See, I never fell for that though. I whenever I get the rocket launcher, I'm like, you know what? Even just for funsies, I'm like, I gotta blow those guys up. Yeah, most people, they see imps and they have a rocket launcher. Even if they're not directly a threat, they're like, I want to kill 20 imps with a single rocket. Absolutely. Now, I've got... I don't... Oh, wait a minute. Did I just spy something with my little eye? Oh, that might be triggered. Ah, I got that the first time too, I think. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to. Um, that's not a usual type of secret that people make. Yeah, I mean, I saw that thing in the wall, and I'm just like, well, I might as well hit stuff around here. So, worked out, I guess. Chain gun's gonna be very helpful. Ah, here we go. Now, uh... So you were, you were, I don't think we talked about this in this recording. Oh, by the way, there's nothing there, is there? There is. Couldn't remember. Yeah, okay. That looked, that looked suspicious. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you, you messed around with vanilla for a while, but you just never released anything. In fact, you had me play some cool post-apocalyptic levels that you, sort of on the back burner, I guess. Um. But you waited, and you really hit with this one. So I, I like that you experimented for a while, and then just like knock people's socks off, <laughs> right? You lock, yeah. knock people's stick knees off. I don't like releasing something unless I'm really confident in how it is. Which I thought your post-apocalyptic stuff was pretty awesome, but you know, 
That just That's... needed more work. The dehack mod that I made, I think, went really well. It's just the levels I need to reassess, especially with some of the textures. I want to get more and remove some because some of them tile really badly. I wasn't. Whoa. Okay, right, one monster left. Uh, got the blue key. Got all the secrets. With, with absolutely no help from anyone. Oh, this guy, that's... That, that is... So, you know what? I do like... You've got some comedy in your maps, and I like that you leave stuff like that in there, you know? Yeah, not everything has to be, like, a challenge, you know? Sometimes I'll just put an unfortunate enemy that just doomed. <laughs> sometimes you put a shotgun behind a barrel. Sometimes you'll put a shotgun facing a wall that's deaf and nobody notices. <laughs> <laughs> just... I, I do like... You know, the sense of humor that you sometimes inject, uh, even even for a moody, atmospheric level set like this. This all, all this also uh, very much reminds me of the original, this opening area. Yeah. Um, but obviously with its own feel. This MIDI, by the way. This, this, who's, what's this? What MIDI is this? This is from uh, Doom the way it did. Midi pack. I like this one. It's got a nice chunky low end. So, uh, you've been looking to do Doom 2 after this, correct? After you're, after you're finished uh, episode 4 of this, which is almost out. Yeah, I have only three maps to go, then I can Shh. stop with Doom 1 for the foreseeable future. It's it's been real and it's been fun, but uh this I, I want mid tiers. It does I did learn a lot from <laughs> from mapping in Doom 1. Um like you really don't need uh, a bunch of mid tiers to make a good map. Like you don't need you don't need revenants, you don't need arch files, you don't need chain gunners. You know what? That's exactly what I had forgotten to bring up that I was about to talk about was it's almost like mapping for Doom 1, you learn some... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's like you learn some fundamentals uh, in, in the fact that you're so limited. You're like, you know, how do I use these low-tier monsters to make an in interesting encounter? I don't have to just shove in Revenants or Archviles or whatever. Um, talk, talk about that experience. Yeah, it's... it's. I was actually hesitant to make uh, Doom 1 maps. It's something I wanted to do. But I kind of viewed it as like objectively worse than making Doom 2 maps because it has <laughs> objectively less... well, ontologically it does, it worse. Less, it has less content to it. Yeah. Um, and like, oh, shh. yeah, you can't go back up there. I'm gonna so don't fall fucking. Um, I'm gonna die though yeah, by are. rushing that. Damn, my first death. That's um, okay. Like, because I don't. Do, think wait, wait. The, uh, how does that go up? Do, do you have to step on, or is there... on it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't actually have to rush it like I like I did there. <laughs> no. My bad. You go there when you're ready. There we go. Anyway. Yeah. So like I, as much as I think the uh, Doom One had better maps, uh, Doom Two content-wise, the Super Shotgun makes yep. fighting all those mid-tiers it adds like not a chore. And there are a lot of like combat like roles that the uh, like Arachnatron, Revenant, Archvile, Mancubus, they all add uh, that adds a lot of variety. But at the same time, uh, when you start out with those, I feel like it's easy to rely on them to just make something hard. Because like low tiers don't have to be like filler that's just like boring. You, you can make a map without. Uh, higher two enemies and that is kind of a switch that i made after anti-mortem which had a like a ton of revenants in it uh now in the few doom 2 maps i've made for a project i'm working on with doom kid uh they only have like one or two and you can get a lot of mileage out of just one or two mid tiers tossed in here and there like there's definitely room to have more in different circumstances but you don't need to rely on them to make every scenario difficult well, this this level's a good case in point. I mean, this this has me scrambling a bit. I've played maps with lots more enemies and lots more higher tier enemies, but you know what? If you balance ammo and health and enemies in such a way, you can get a lot of mileage out of this. Yeah, 
the difficulty in this one is uh, the ammo isn't scarce, like at least later on, but you're kind of drip fed ammo until you make your way up to this chain gun or to the upper portion of the other side of the map. Yeah, and so I, I, you know what, I'm excited for the stuff you make in the future because you're going to be doing Doom 2. Um, by the way, this this looked like something, but probably not, right? No. Um, but it's like, you know, it's almost like it reminds me of music a little bit where like, not that this is true, but sometimes it's like, you know, you might learn some jazz technique, not because you want to play jazz, but because it sort of gives you these fundamentals for your instrument. It almost feels like that, where it's like, you know, you're learning how to get mileage out of basic monsters, and that's going to help you with even crazier stuff you do. Yeah. So, uh... May every Doom mapper needs to <laughs> make Doom 1. That's what I'm saying here. No, I, I really. didn't say that as a joke, but I do recommend making a couple of Doom 1 maps. If you've got the time and you like mapping for Doom, it does does do a lot. Oh no. Oh, there's a switch there. Not a lot of people do it either. Most people just don't want to bother with it because they miss the SSG too much. Oh yeah, baby. That's yeah, you know, up here. You know, well, you know, thankfully you don't make me miss the the SSG uh, in this. So that's good balancing. Um is There, there are a few points where you have barons that you might single shotgun, but you pretty much never like actually need to. Though I, I do think that sometimes that can work because of how long it takes. If you're if you're stuck in a tight space and you can't tear through a Baron, that can be pretty difficult if you're stuck in that room for a little bit. Right, as long as it's not just like a freaking Baron like right out in the open. Yeah, because then you're just, it's a imp with a big uh, health bar. Everything's just an imp with a... Bar. I made that look like a secret, even though it isn't. Oh, the flickering like, light in the yeah. corpse. <laughs> <laughs> is that just, again, is that you just being funny? Kind of, yeah. I was just like, because I saw that, I'm like, oh, this would make a decent secret. Then I'm like, or I could just make it look like one and just leave it there. <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> pretty much everyone stops to, like, use that panel or, like, look around to see what there's anything there. Do you enjoy watching people get messed up by jokes like that? Is that how you get your sick kicks? Kinda. I mean, I do think that's nice where, like, if you see something out of the ordinary, it doesn't mean it's always a secret. It just means, hey, maybe I should look around here. Sometimes it's something, sometimes it isn't. I'm guessing there's something around there. Um... Oh, you didn't get the, uh, the secret by the entrance again. <laughs> after you I'm really good at that, aren't I? Missing, missing the secret right at the beginning. But isn't there? There's something back here, right? Yeah. Yep. There's a very nice secret in there. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Um, looks like I gotta go all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Now this reminds me of a part in Doom One. Isn't that? Any one this... in four? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Where's the edge? Oh, fuck. That's in the original, too, isn't it? Yep. Wait a minute. Oh, I restarted and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense hey. why I admit it. Yeah. All right. And I just gotta go around here. Oh, that midi's so good. It's chunky. Now, uh... For Doom 2, like, uh, you're thinking of doing that, you think you're gonna take a bit of the same philosophy of sort of, uh... Oh! Sorry, this is the MIDI you made. Yeah. Yeah, what's this called again, this MIDI? Well, the placeholder name I gave it was Tuna, but I don't I didn't know what else to call it. <laughs> but I'll give it an actual name. I'll probably release, like, uh, the album of MIDIs once they're all done. Yeah. 
Yeah, you started learning some in. some MIDI stuff, and uh, I heard some of your early ones, and um, this was the first one. Was this not the first one that you were really happy with? I made one that was like me learning how to make music, and then this is like the first like actual one. It's a bit basic. I do think the other ones I made after this are way better, but I, I still do like how this stuff turned out. Yeah. And uh, not to toot my own horn, but I, I may have uh, given some of my input as a professional drummer. No, not really, but professional drumist. Ooh, that's a nice chunky room there. I want to get that fucking barrel. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know what? It's cool. Uh, you know, I play, I, I dabble in drums here and there. And uh, you, you know you were learning some some music theory, some some scales, some some basic drum stuff, but you actually came up with some cool drum grooves that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of as someone who plays. But you you, I think it gives you a unique perspective to just make midis based on the music that you like to listen to, and not necessarily know the theory behind it. Like I think it's turned out really well. Yeah, I play it by ear, and it also some of the stuff I listen to uses drum machines, so. It doesn't follow what like actual drumming would be. True. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whereas like when I was listening to it, I would put on my drummer hat and be like, "Oh, this is." I would think to play this. Ah, you know, sometimes it's a little mix of that. Probably works. Oh. Oh, baby. Uh, shotgunners are just so satisfying when you get them and they don't hit you. Oh. This area has a few weird secrets. Oh, that's it's the like They're... one down there, right? Yeah, it's it's meant to be a little bit confusing. Not in that it's hard to get, but just like Wait a minute. I think I just This is is this the Kodo instrument? Yeah. This is a very helpful. Oh, hell yeah. I forgot about that. I want to get back there, though. Oh, shit. Uh, get me back there so I can... This is this is a scary area in the original, so I'd like to... Let's just, uh... Take out the trash here. <laughs> that was very satisfying getting a rocket launcher before that. Oh shh. Just blow them up as they come down the elevator. Like, gee, I I I just wonder what Doom guy's up to, and then a rocket just comes up. <laughs> and with that area, like that secret with the rocket launcher, when I was first making that map where you have to walk over the new kitchen, I'm like like, this doesn't make sense in, like, an actual, like, place while you'd have to walk through this acid to, like, <laughs> get somewhere. So I put this, like, connected hallway that's just blocked off that's a secret. So after you get it, you can walk in between those two areas without walking over the nukage. So you so were actually, you know, you're actually very nice and you've actually been conscientious to the, the experience of, of UAC employees. Yeah, except for this area where you actually have to walk through it. <laughs> except for this area, right? Yeah, you know, we're not too nice, though. Uh, I did do that a decent amount of this, but with, like, in Antimortem especially, um, I don't necessarily like really abstract-looking levels. I like making them look like they're, like, an actual place, which in Vanilla, there's a lot less you can do with that. So with Hell, I'm willing to lean more into, like, an abstract design. But with anti-boredom, I just, I really tried making environments that look like they were a real place, even if it's, like, obviously, like, not, even though it's, ob like, obviously a fictional setting. It's a real demon spaceship. Right? Yeah. And I kind of did that a bit here, where I tried to make stuff look like there was some purpose behind it, rather than just shoving computers in just random places. Right. A UAC personnel would would definitely use a computer right here. Where you'd see like windows in like Doom 1 that just like opened up like into like the sky and it's like you just have outdoor computers everywhere. This area is a little bit set inside the walls, but. Okay, we got the blue key. Yeah. 
I thought it was cool that you were learning this MIDI stuff and just like literally just learning like here's what you know an A minor scale is, here's how you make a melody by by using these notes in the scale. Like I, I don't even know that stuff. I play drums. I just know how to hit stuff. Uh, but it honestly piqued my interest. If I if I had more energy these days, I probably would try that as well, but uh like it it seems like it's pretty fun to come up with these melodies. Yeah. You just play uh, it by this ear, is one right? Of the, pretty much. I mean there's more to it than that, but I the stuff I've made I haven't used any like guitars or anything like that. I found that hard to make sound decent, so instead I opted for like uh just other instruments. This one uses a kodo and uh it has a cello instead of a bass. Um, yeah, and then it's uh, synth strings, which I use for the other midis that I've made. You were you gonna say something about this area? Oh, I don't remember. It's like the <laughs> original. It's annoying. But, yeah, there's but there's no light goggles secret. It's earlier in the level, I guess. Yeah, you can get to it in time, and or you could save them. But now, was this a secret right? Like this this thing right here? Yeah. Now, how do I get that? Go back over there. Um. Here. Yeah, so go down the lift. Did you hear that? Oh, you jerk. Wait, did I do it right? Is it... Where's the... Okay, there we go. Gotta do it in the right sequence, because if yeah. you're just walking out, you'll um just trigger that one first, so you won't be able to get to it in time. So you have to lower the lift, walk over it, and then walk back. It's a very light puzzle for a single. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one more secret, which is very close to you. See those boxes? What about them? Get in there. Get in there? Yeah. What do you mean? Jump on him. Jump on, jump on it. Oh! <laughs> it's funny how like, can you even see that from anywhere? That chain gun? No. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe from there. But... But I didn't even see it before. I, yeah, like right, right there. <laughs> it's funny. It's just directly, just you know, in the open, kind of, but you just can't see it. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, I. It's not crazy to, to want to jump onto those boxes. Data storage. Drilling compound. Oh, yeah. This map actually has the highest enemy count of the entire wide. You kidding me? Even episode four? Yeah. What? How many people does it need to take to operate a drilling compound? A lot. 174. 174 imps. But you see, the way it works, though, is, like, Episode 4 has a lot of, like, it has a lot more demons, it's got a lot of souls, it's got cacos and barons. So you need, you don't need that as many enemies. For these are all low tiers, so it's still way easier than the other episodes. Still, we've got, like uh, episode... shotgunner patrols here. Yeah, this map does have the second highest amount of shotgunners. I think there's, like, 50 or something. Ooh, 50! Nice. Now, isn't there... Oh, shit! Yeah, there is one. And isn't there a secret here? God, yeah. Is it like... What? Is that crazy? Other one. I didn't want to touch the red suit. Damn it. Well, got a backpack. And a soul sphere. Oh, I didn't even freaking notice that. Well, uh, that'll probably be more useful than the backpack. Uh, I've also got tons of shotgun shells, so I'm sitting pretty right now. Another switch. Yeah, there's a lot of those in this wood. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make your secrets? Because I know sometimes, like, literally I will, like strafe onto some interesting thing you'll be like that should be a secret but but 
Do you have a philosophy for secrets? Well, the first set are ones where I like just try to stash a few. Um, <laughs> that combined with like some are mistakes where I'm like, yeah, that could be a secret. Not, I don't usually do like misaligned textures. I don't think I actually do any that are like misaligned. Um, yeah, you don't like those. No, I don't. I don't generally like wall humping either. Normally, it's like this texture is different from the other ones in the area. So like, you don't like it in Doom either, right? Yeah, like I don't. I don't wall hump for secrets in Doom. Um, but if I use like a special computer texture that's like only in that one area, that'll like open it potentially. But I don't just pick random stuff to open things normally. Oh, I think I was about to ask you something. And oh, this is actually a cool area. Um, for Doom, did I ask you in Doom 2 if you're gonna if you're gonna go by the similar philosophy of like taking a couple key parts and kind of putting your own spin, maybe even a dark moody spin? Yeah, I probably will. Um, though I think it'll end up being less like that than this one is because uh... you've got more to play around with. Doom 2 has some oh. of the levels are just kind of meh. Yeah. Even where we like Doom 1, even the bad levels still typically have like a good atmosphere going. So right. I'll probably end up doing that a bit for Doom 2, but I don't know how extensive it'll be. Right. Yeah, it's something I guess you'll probably just feel out what what is kind of interesting and fun for you. Yeah. Though it would also be interesting to make levels that are like interesting compared to Doom 2, which is a lot of the levels are just uh, I'm not a, a fan of. Like the concept could work, but I I am probably way harsher on Doom 2 than a lot of people are. Yeah. I, I hate almost all of the first episode. Well, bold of you to want to make a Doom 2 replacement then. <laughs> well, I'll I'll make it in my my mapping image. Yeah. What I think would be acceptable. Awesome. Uh, it's you know it's it's cool that i mean you and wilster have both been doing that kind of thing but uh you both put your own stamp on it around the same time so and in fact i believe both your episode fours will be re releasing quite quite close together yeah someone's trying to release it a day before me his is all done he's just literally waiting to i'm ready <laughs> he's just spite posting he's a spite Which, artist uh, that's fine. I can have the last uh, Doom 1 megawatt released of the year. Well, Codename Delta was doing one. But I don't know if he's doing a megawatt, actually. A four episode megawatt? We'll see. Right. <laughs> we'll see about those that. Are, those are really rare. Like, uh, yeah. most, pretty much every megawatt for Doom 1 cuts off after three episodes, which makes sense because three episodes is already 27 maps in four episodes for doom one is 36 which is kind of excessive yeah you like that i found that by the way yeah <laughs> i'm impressed with myself and i'm getting burnt out of doom one but yeah i'm being carried through because episode four was my favorite episode by far so it is fun making maps for those even I think though a lot I'm... of people are fond of that so yeah Oh, by the way, this is the, the area that in the original was kind of boring and annoying, but here I think you put your own spin on it, which, you know, you were just talking about how, you know, with Doom 2, you don't like some of the levels, but I like I like you taking, like, kind of bad parts of the original and, like, making them better. Yeah, that's, that is part of the appeal with Doom 2, because it'd be more of that where I'm trying to fix stuff up. Cause I mean, Doom 2 did do a lot of abstract and like interesting like gimmicks for levels. So it'd be neat to expand those. Oh, you tried to get me there, didn't you? Yeah. Sure. But yeah, this area originally was just like this maze that was just so annoying to get through. So I, this is just more of like a three by three grid rather than like a maze. Yeah. Because uh, I don't like mazes very much. You can make them work, but Generally, they're not fun. You know, it's funny. I remember as a kid, I loved mazes and maze books. And I just realized, you think... I, I know some of those, like, early 90s wads. There's a lot of, like, mazes, which are terrible. But I wonder if just a lot of kids were really into it. And just were like, I want to make a maze in Doom. 
Yeah, the 90s seemed to be a lot more puzzle oriented. Yeah. Um, with wads. Also, it's like a little like thing that people wouldn't necessarily notice. There are block lines for the pools of nukage, so the uh, demons don't get like pulled up and like cornered, like trying to follow you. So they actually use like the the walkways like you do, so they can actually follow you uh, way better. By the way, I remember this one now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that one. Wasn't it clip you play? There's just like, oh, that's. You need to fix that. It's just like, no, that's. Yeah, that's I think he. That was him. Yeah, someone played it, and then they ran through it, and then he was like, uh, he yeah. The first assumption was that it was broken. Like, no, there's a rocket launcher right there. That's. Well, it could be another way to get it, but yeah, it's uh. Ooh. Well, I've Maybe got all. Wait. Something happen. <laughs> did, did you like go blind death skip or something? I oh, think that you opened. did. Oh, it opened when I, I went back. Is it supposed to go when I go in here? Uh, yeah, I've never had it happen the other way. But I, whatever. you know what? I don't even. Th I don't even like. I don't even <laughs> consciously strafe. So like, I don't know. How the light? It was it. Where does it hit? Like here? I don't remember. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I have it set up in a spot that you can't just. Oh, that's why. It looks like it's. You can technically walk around it. Uh. Because it's on the the walkway. So if you go through the nukage. Actually, I don't think you walk through the nukage though. So that wouldn't. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to we'll have to see that in the post post yeah. game report. <laughs> at least know. it does open if it doesn't if you can skip a monster closet by walking choosing to hurt yourself in nukage at one point i can live with that yeah at a miscellaneous spot i thought it was broken but no because like i've have played this several times and watched so many oh, people play through this. this yeah have you changed this at all uh why does barely. this seem harder I think I might have put a few imps near the start, but I mean, you did pull out your rocket launcher the first time. Yeah, but these guys were almost too close this time, you know, right away. Well, the imps were. Oh. Yeah, I, for some reason, last time I remember just pulling out my rocket launcher, and they were like far enough away, and then I guess this time I wasn't ready. Yeah, they're, they're pretty sure there were still imps there. I think it just added like one or two extra. Yeah. But. Well, that could one or two enemies if you if you want to get the rocket launcher can be make all the difference. Is that a, a slight misalignment? Yeah. Uh, you know, a Doom Mapper's job is never done. <laughs> it's the last enemy. Nice. With the heaviest monster quantity map. Woo! Drilling through those demons, you know. Pretty much all the map names for this uh, episode are generic. Why is... Why... Oh, wait a minute. Does Ultimate Doom... Like, DSDA and Ultimate Doom doesn't actually skip the the text immediately, I just noticed. That is weird. Because uh, that happened with Codename Deltas, and I was like... And I forgot. Oh, this is entryway. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to turn around to see it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to restart that. Um, this is one of the only maps in this episode that gave some people trouble. That guy didn't die. Nope. Uh oh. Try to get those shotgunners. So how do you map so fast? Because I noticed even Doom Kid was like, "Yo, how do you how do you get all this? How do you pump these maps out so fast? Like Doom Kid couldn't even keep up." Um, I don't know. I just do the thing. You just do the thing. I I, I, I wonder really if it is really like anti mortem, like you put so much work into that that this is just child's play for you now. 
I, I do think that's part of it. Um, I find the hardest part of making a map is starting it. Um, and the biggest issue I ran into uh, when I was first making maps was I'd constantly make these layouts and just scrap them because it's so easy to make a layout that isn't friendly with actually playing it in like a way that's like engaging. Um, so like a lot of anti-mortem maps, like the real hard part was just getting started on it. And then I would think a map would take forever to make. And I'm like, oh man, I just have so much work to do. Then literally all of a sudden while I'm making this map, thinking I'm like halfway through, I'm like, wait a minute, it's done. <laughs> um, where with these is kind of the same thing. I just kind of, um, I found the easiest, like a good, just finding a way to start a map and keep it interesting was the hardest part. And then I can just go from there. Um, just build momentum. Yeah. The, and the blank canvas, one of the scariest parts of the artist. I do have a, uh, a little cheat for people that uh, that make maps, uh, and you have trouble with that too. Um, what, what you should do is copy like the exit area for your map into the like the newest one that's just blank, and then just build off of that, and then just delete that exit area. So it feels like you're kind of building off of the previous map, even though you're not. Yeah, I and just found it easier because you have like a you have a single room that connects to the actual map, and that's something to go off of instead of nothing. And it does show some continuity as well in your map if you keep that in there. Yeah. Um, I don't do it much in this episode. Sometimes when I make maps, you can see, like, previous areas from, like, a map before, or you can, like, foreshadow them. But I don't. I only do that in episode 4, which is currently unreleased. But it does help keep a setting going. Like, if you finish off with, like, a certain theme and then you enter into the next one it does it does add a lot well it's smart because not only does it oh shit this area not only does it help you you know get past the the, the horror of the blank canvas but um it gives a con continuous feel and theme to your to your wad which is also something cool yeah it's like the whole wad's a stream of consciousness where you're just like building off one the other so they kind oh, of blend together nicely. Oh, sh shisa. Oh, 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 arrow. <laughs> I like that you give the rocket launcher there and you're just like, okay, I dare you to use it now. Also, you see that lift? Uh, if you go back to it, um, it doesn't so have a step texture. It's just the, so it blends in. So it's oh, hard to yeah, get up there. the elevator is. Yeah, some yeah, people thought that was escape. a mistake, but that was to make it so you can't just dodge out. <laughs> Going on the record to say that was intentional. No, I have, I, I, there are some mistakes I've made that turn out to be beneficial. But this that feels one was, like... That was a secret. It, it is? You no, no, I mean, it. it almost feels like strafing onto that would be like an extra. Oh. Is that, no. that, that looks barely possible. I'm just gonna do it just for fun. Is there ammo up there? Sometimes I'll put like hit scanners on a place you can no, just an M. Yeah. Well, whatever. I I freaking I can touch this imp and move on with my life. You know. Maybe I'll throw a couple health bonuses down there or something. Yeah. Uh oh, the yellow door. But outside of like super minor fixes like misalignments, these maps are all like <laughs> done. Episode one especially. Yeah, well, you yeah, you you mentioned there's some minor fixes here and there, but yeah, the stuff that you encounter is just stuff I haven't seen, like that, like misalignment or two. Is, what wait, I've been doing, uh, what? This is the one where you can do it this way, right? Yeah, there's also a walk line that triggers somewhere else. That's funny. I think that I think that was how I found it the first time. Yeah, that was unintentional, but I liked how it turned out. Yeah, it's cool. Where's the walk line for that? It's up there. You just, it's, yeah. It's oh, those up, stairs. Oh, oh, up there. Oh, no, up like here. Stairs. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Honestly, like a nice little like strafe like that feels like satisfying though. You can time it. Wait, I have a, okay. 
Okay, there are specters down there. I was about to rocket over there, and then I was scared. Oh, they're actually gonna bite me as well. Um, this is one of the largest spaces in this wad, too. I don't might normally... have to get back to that part. <laughs> yeah. One of the largest spaces. I know with vanilla that can be tough. Yeah, that's why the room's so dark and kind of basic, because I literally couldn't add more to it. It's also tough with like a large space, because if you detail in one spot, it makes the rest of the area look bare. So it's better to have like a light detail for the entire area rather than just in one spot. Like if you just have a giant empty room and then you have like a single like crack in the ceiling, that's going to look not good. <laughs> I... Which is partially why it's so dark. There are other areas oh. that are bigger and show off more. But... Is there a secret around there or is that just an imp? That's just an imp, I think. Okay. Because, uh, the specters were not being nice to me there. Yeah, he's just to uh, throw some fireballs at you without him being able to, like, follow you around. Oh, these at guys most, are... there's, like, a little bit of ammo in there or something, but I don't think there is. Where are these specters? What are they Now they're scared of you. Hello. Um... And if you yeah, want a pro they... tip, secret sectors can't hurt you if you stand on them. Even if it looks like it. Oh, right. Well... You, you can in UDMF, but not in... Vanilla. I and mean, maybe with self reference sectors. This could sectors kill me, though, if I go... Please. See? Okay, I didn't... That one spot, the nukage doesn't hurt you because it's a secret. Nice. Pro tip. I don't know a lot of vanilla stuff. I know you, like... Well, you weren't mapping in vanilla, but I know you like to... Pl like... Well, it probably helps that you really like to play vanilla. In fact, you like to usually play with kind of the... The most basic port possible, even with DOS, right? Yeah, I don't always use DOS because it's annoying to set up, but if it is a vanilla wad, a lot of times I will use Chocolate Doom. And that did probably help a little bit with uh, mapping, I'm guessing. Yeah. Knowing what to I expect. do use... The source for it is kind of based on the, the way it looks, too. Like, if there's a highly detailed boom map, I don't necessarily want, like, a low resolution because that makes them muddies things. But if you get a nice really vanilla looking set of maps the low resolution just works really well oh. have you I tried like this in DOS map. at all yeah I played I did a play I play test uh, the episode at the end DOS to make sure stuff works this chocolate doom unintentionally fixes some things right yeah this yeah, is it's... another example of a uh, foreshadowing yeah which uh, I went for the strobe light, the neon wireframe thing for vanilla doom stock textures, which actually turned out decent, I think. I missed a guy. Somewhere. God damn it. This, it. Was there more than one specter down there? I think you'd hear him. Oh. 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 Yep. Sounds like it. That jerk. Where is he? Probably around the corner. Can't even see them. The freaking specters in DSDA too. Actually, shouldn't they be more accurate in software? Maybe not, I don't know. Do not know. I think? Uh, well, I mean, mm -hmm. it is a dark area. It's really hard to see them in a light level like that. Yeah. Um, which normally uh, people... I've seen a lot of mappers do this, where they put, like, specters only in dark areas. When that's kind of obnoxious, it's usually you want a mix of them. I actually find them in, like, regular areas kind of useful. If you just toss one specter in with a group of pinkies, people usually don't expect you to put one in there, and they can just sneak up on you. Yeah. I went the wrong way. Yeah. 
What was that sound? That was the lift, I think. Alrighty. Like I think I've gotten like all the no, maybe not all the items, but I feel like I've may have actually so far. You've gotten at least most of them. Most of the maps you got 100 percent I don't really hide items that much. Phobos Gate. This is um this And if you see the map's actually flipped now. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool like not only is it cool to see continuity, but, you know, if it helps you start off your mapping, too, that's uh, a win-win. Yeah, like, this area was, like, tech base in this portion that was inverted. Now, if I remember correctly... Also, the only blood that doesn't hurt you in the, in the wad. Looks like it's just... Okay, so, this one... I might die to this more than once. Because, um, uh, yeah, you did a fun thing with barrels here. This is some barrels of fun for sure. Oh, yeah. The barrels are teleporting in on the edges, so you can't get too close, although that will stop. In fact, it just did. And that lets you actually dip over to get health. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that barrel. Got a shotgun box there. That's a lot of pinkies. So, this is cool because in this episode, in this wad, you actually tried to stick to the original boss fight to some degree and so we have the bruiser brothers and you were like how do i make this interesting in the modern day you just have a fucking ring of barrels and too many goddamn pinkies and it's pretty exciting yeah uh this is probably one of the only points where you can end up in a situation where you need to shotgun them i mean you also do have a chain gun but yeah. I didn't want to add a rocket launcher because that made it way too easy. Uh, plus, the original didn't. I didn't typically copy the weapons, but if you... They do end up losing a bit of health to infighting, but also with the amount of barrels, you can get them to infight. Right. I've gotten to do that a few times. It's a bit tricky, but it's not that hard to pull off. So you still got some options instead of having to single shock on them, but... It was worth the sacrifice, because I really didn't want to put a rocket launcher in. <laughs> I mean, it would be hard. You obviously wouldn't be able to use it right away, just because of all the stuff, but it would make the end easier. Yeah. There's three enemies. So you made this so you can UV max this as well, which is... Yeah. Wait a minute, did I... Oh, okay, no, I got them all. I was scared for a second. You telefrag the, the pinky. <laughs> oh, baby. Now, that was a good time. And just, just over an hour, too. Perfect. I will First, add a custom story, um, once I add the fourth episode in. You, you don't, you don't want the fat reward and take it out of here? Not particularly. Doom Kid won't stop bothering me about, about it, so I need to add a custom story. <laughs> he would, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I can't skip this in... Ultimate Doom? What the heck? Well, anyway, that's gonna do it for episode one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about your experience with this. I think this was uh, this was really enjoyable. Yeah, thanks for playing. And uh, I think we should probably do the other episodes of this, don't you think? I mean, if you want to, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> There's... Uh, there's this, I think I can see the Stickney installation from here. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to do them saveless, because, man, they're going to get tricky, but I, I might try. You think I could do that? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, if you could do most of Anti-Mortem saveless, I think you could do this. Nice. All right. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time for more Stickney or just more classic Doom content. So stay tuned, and... Goodbye.